Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, and here are five big mistakes that you could be making in Warcraft Rumble, all of which I made for a moment in no particular order, Let's begin. Actually, I would like to mention there are in kind of a particular order because I wrote them down. And this one I think is the absolute most important. And you're probably gonna hear this a lot because it is the number one pitfall for players in Warcraft Rumble, and it is talents. Talents inside the game are one of the biggest decisions that you can make in Warcraft Rumble, but it does not seem like that from the outset. This is a number one, the biggest mistake you can make with a unit. When you upgrade a unit from common to uncommon, I will show you that right now. You have three copies of this Harpy right here. I use some energy and those three stars to upgrade this. I will unlock a talent slot for my harpies. Once you unlock that, there's a possibility that inside the grid, you will see a talent for these harpies. You also gain a level with that unit. Right here, you can see there is a talent inside my grid right now for the leader, Sylvanas Windrunner. This is the Black Arrow talent, pierced through enemies in a line, dealing elemental damage. This is actually probably the talent I wanna pick up for this hero, but I'm not so sure yet. Even though I've been playing a lot of Warcraft Rumble, I'm not buying this talent right away because because once you buy this, you are locked into that talent until you upgrade this unit to the next rarity, which I have right here for my Blackrock Pyromancer, rare. And that takes a while. You will not see the other talents cycle through the grid at all. So if you get your Harpies upgraded, you have a choice between Infectious Swipes, Trinket Collectors, or Talon Dive. And once you pick it, you're locked in. Like, you're locked in for a while here and you could make some good calls and you could make some bad calls please new players don't grab talents right away some of them sound good and are not so good i've got some good ones on this squad right here but i have units inside my uh minis here that i talk about like my worgen talent i picked lone wolf it is really not what you expect. I thought it was gonna be this awesome situation where I would deploy Worgen often on the battlefield and I would you know, reduce its gold cost by one, but the radius of it is huge. Long-winded way of saying, be careful with your talents. Don't get them right away. Play a good amount of the game before you start deciding on talents. Watch some content creators. See which talents seem to actually work well. You'll see them in some videos because you could make some pretty big mistakes with some of these. Like for instance, uh, Flame Burst here for Whelp Eggs. When I looked at Whelp Eggs originally, I wasn't sure which one I was gonna do. I thought Flame Burst sounded kind of cool. Chromatic Plating, I thought, okay, I could draw aggro from enemies. Rookery, you could have them all explode at once creating like a faster way to attack some of your opponents all of these kind of sound good however flame burst is far and away the best especially when i saw some other creators using it i thought oh absolutely this is just like op but you wouldn't know that just from reading them all so i think it's really really important biggest tip i can give you just be conservative with your talents wait for a little bit, wait until you can actually see it and get a good idea of how it's gonna work because some of these are good, some of them are kind of mid and some are straight up bad. The number two biggest mistake you can make is not doing arc light surges, not continuing to push through the PVE campaign and not claiming, claiming your rewards every single day. Claiming, come on now, Jake. You are going to have lots of ways to upgrade your units. A game like this wants you playing every single day and there are things to come back for every day. You have these three rewards that you can get just by playing matches. You can do quests, PVE, PVP, and you'll be able to unlock these tomes. Sometimes like today, I have a leader choice, which is really, really cool. Make sure you're doing your quests. Make sure that you are completing this, at least just on a daily basis. Come on in and do your mission so you can clear this out. And when an arc light surge is happening, that's when one of these areas here turns blue and you'll be able to go in there and just complete missions essentially for fun that are lower than your level and get gold from it. The amount of gold you can get from an arc light surge is equivalent to spending like five bucks inside the shop so it's a very very good time to hop on in there and do that and while we're talking about it let's talk about the third tip i'm getting my fingers in there let's talk about the third tip sounded bad that i'm going to talk about right here uh one of the biggest mistakes you can make is buying the wrong things in the shop this area right here 
daily offers, stay far, far away from daily offers. You don't wanna be spending your gold here. As I've talked about in a previous video, focus on spending it inside the grid. Now, this is a mistake you could make. Let's take a look at my Huntress right here. I have an uncommon Huntress with a talent that I like. Me buying more Huntresses to get it up to rare, all that's going to do, if I buy the, if I buy each one of them, I need 10 total, so that's 900 gold to get it up to a rarity. Uh, and then once I get that, it will get one level and I will have access to one other talent. Uh, you can only bring one talent into battle, by the way. So if I already like my talent, I would be spending 900 gold just to have it gain one level. Now, eventually, I obviously, I want this. Huntress is great. I think this is an awesome unit. And eventually, I do want it to be rare just so I can get that, you know, extra level that I would get from becoming rare. But besides that, I would be wasting a ton of resources to get this unit up to rare. So at the beginning of the game, try to get every single unit. It'll happen pretty fast if you're smart about how you're buying your troops. Try to get all your troops, all your spells, because it raises your collection level. Then from there, you can go from uncommon, excuse me, from common, this gray uh, look right here, common, to uncommon right here, and that's when you will start getting talents. I would focus on units that you like moving from uh, common to uncommon, but especially when going from uncommon to rare, I would really, really be careful. Don't waste a ton of resources doing this. This is something that you're gonna be doing later in the game. You don't need to focus all of your energy on a Huntress right now. Don't focus all your energy on a Huntress. Huh. Sounds like a life tip. This is a quick one for your events. Make sure that you are doing your dungeons with your units that you have for that week. So it's Alliance week right now. Uh, dress appropriately. Make sure that you are putting your units into this dungeon right here. Like I haven't done any for Maev. I haven't done enough for Jaina. Throw them in there. Get their upgrades. Once you get their army upgrades, your units just inside your decks right here are going to get bonus levels as long as they are at, you know, correctly put onto the right thing. Like, look at this right here for my Ev. I actually need to switch this right here. These skeletons are unbound, but these well pegs are not a tank unit with these little hearts right here. So I need to put a tank unit onto this spot to give it plus one level. Do your dungeons. You are not punished at all if you fail them. Uh, so please make sure that you are doing your dungeons. The next two tips are going to be about gameplay right here. I've talked a lot about some of the outside of gameplay things, which I think is extremely important because that's where you're going to make your biggest mistakes. But inside the game, I think it's really important to start understanding how aggro works and how you can set yourself up for success. So a basic concept, right? You put a tank out and then behind your tank, you have a ranged unit. This is super simple, but what this is going to do is any unit that attacks a uh, a, another unit as long as it's able to hit it so it's not a ground unit that can only hit ground will aggro the first thing right next to it so if I set this Huntress down right here all of these units will walk straight into Huntress and start to attack it uh, same thing with this Huntress right here. However, if I see that this Huntress is going to hit my units right here, I can drop a unit, an unbound unit like a Quillbore, before the Huntress is able to kind of acquire that aggro, and then I am able to redirect where that unit's going to attack. Let's take a look at it right here as we're gonna put down, okay, we'll do this with some Harpies. And I'll show it right here with the quill bore. So this Drake's gonna attack these harpies. I use this quill bore, it redirects the Drake's attention, this unbound unit, and now these harpies who are going to get roasted by that Drake right there walk right through because I put something in their face that they wanted to attack first. This is just the basic concept of why people put the tank out and then the tank soaks up all the damage. But you can do this with unbound units too. It's one of the coolest things inside this game is just dropping an unbound unit into a situation where you're able to redirect the aggro of the enemies. Now let's take a look at this tower right here. If I were to throw a unit down before they get to the tower, they would start attacking the unit if it was closer to them. But if I put a unit afterwards, they're attacking the tower, my unit's attacking them. There are times you're going to want to put something in front of the tower to make sure that you soak up damage. There are other times where if you throw a unit down, they're just going to knock it out really quick. So you want to make sure that you can put your unit down after the tower has kind of already acquired that aggro. 
The next thing I want to talk to you about is making a positive gold trade. So there are a lot of situations where you can throw down, you know, a blizzard right here and you say like, ah, I'm hitting that meat wagon and I'm hitting the boss right there. And of course, in PvE, there are some situations where maybe that's okay. But a lot of the time in Warcraft Rumble, you want to spend your energy on making positive gold trades. So you want to make sure that whatever you are expending is dealing with more than it costs if i were to drop this huntress down right here and these spiderlings were set up in a situation to knock this huntress out right that would be a an amazing gold trade for my opponents uh same thing if i'm able to pay uh a one cost spell and ko something that is you know worth a lot more that's an amazing gold trade right you want to be thinking about it in terms like that if i can play blizzard for four gold, and I can, you know, take out enemies on the opposing team that cost them 10 or 11 gold to send my way, those are huge positive trades. In the same way the other way, if I use a blizzard to take out a two cost unit like a quill bore, well, then I'm wasting a lot of money right there. So it's really, really important to notice gold trades like that. Thinking about the game in this sort of economistic way there's no way that word works there uh, i think is the best way to think about how to deal with things for instance if you look at a unit like whelp eggs or harpies let's take a look at uh harpies right here harpies are a three cost unit they're aerial they do a ton of damage you can even see what i was about to explain here right in that little screen they are taking out an Abomination because Abomination can't hit air units. They're taking out a six cost unit for three cost. You want to be constantly thinking about gold trades in this and how you can best keep a gold advantage over your opponent. Finally, I want to talk to you briefly about chests and miners inside of PvP and PvE. You want to take advantage of a gold uh, increase anytime you can. Units like Quillbore or Safe Pilot can land on gold resources just like that and take a huge advantage away from your opponents. Also, your opponents are going to play their miners. If you play Chain Lightning on a miner unit, it will take that unit out. Yes, you are paying two gold to take down a miner, but if that miner would have mined three gold, you are in a massive advantage right there. Keeping control of the economy inside of Warcraft Rumble is extremely important. Like I always say, look at it from an economist point of view and you will start doing better inside of your games. Focus on controlling the gold and then you will easily be able to set up pushes. Again, you can use a safe pilot and boom, land right on a chest and take it away from your opponents. It's pretty important to notice these things and if they're already starved for gold, you can keep hitting them with something like chain lightning and take out their miners it's just going to set them up into a situation where they're always going to be behind and that's going to put you in a situation where you're always ahead i mean the math checks out people if they're always behind you're always ahead oh i forgot one important thing guilds join a guild i just started a new one for members of this channel the b tier Still got the beats here. And if we have a ton of excitement for this, you can hop in my Discord. We could have multiple guilds for people who watch my channel. So uh, I'll have my Discord link below. And the B tier is open right now for people who are watching this video. If you're interested in playing a lot of Warcraft Rumble, I definitely am. Hop on in. We'll do our quest together. We'll unlock Sylvanas. We'll unlock the emote. And we'll be cool. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If there's something I missed, leave it in the comments below. Or if you think there's something that particularly helped. I love you. I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.